Hello, this is Scott. So welcome back to my YouTube channel uh, where I cover a variety of different data science and analytics uh, topics. Specifically, um, as far as platforms, um, I, I cover both commercial platforms as well as open source. Today we're talking about R and R Studio, and we're continuing on with our time series and forecasting um, uh, videos or lectures. We're going to be talking today about ARIMA, as we have been for the last few, and uh, particularly we're talking about stationarity testing um, within R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, by the way, I'm referencing uh, some R Studio uh, document the documentation. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a series. So we, we are going to... Um, create um, a vector of 0 to 300. Um, we're going to create a stationary series, uh, random uh, normal, uh, with mean 1, standard deviation uh, uh, 0. And then we're going to uh, create a trended series, uh, a cumulative series from a random normal um, as well. So this is going to be our trend. And then we're going to uh, uh, normalize based upon the maximum value here. Um, normalize not in the statistical sense, but um, in the uh, uh, location sense here. So I'm going to create a Y stationary and, and Y trend as well. So if I were to look, I've got my series of 0 to 300. If I were to plot that series, um, since this is just numeric, I can add lines and look at that um, in, the, in the lower right within, within R Studio. So um, looks like white noise, uh, random normal uh, process. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, use the autocorrelation function and we've seen this before in in a previous series um, and we've been using the fpp2 package but this time we're not we're actually deviating from that a little bit i'm going to plot this out and then i'm going to uh, compute a um, uh, acf uh, for this this series itself all right so this is for the stationary signal and as we can see here, this is consistent with what we just saw. Um, if you can see my mouse, the stationary signal on the, the lower right-hand panel. And this is our ACF. And pretty much everything coming within the 95% the confidence intervals of that ACF, um, as we've seen before. This is a little bit of a repeat, but we're talking about the different ways to test um, here. And then if we do the trended signal on the right, we can see that the ACF is definitely well beyond the 95% region. And again, we are testing here the um, serial uh, correlations. And so in our stationary series, we have no serial correlations. And then we can see that um, in the trend signal that, that we do have those. Another thing that we could do is we could compute a, a box young statistic. So um, I'm going to create a lag of 25, which means I'll be testing backwards um, for 25 different um, lags of correlation. And um, I'm going to compute this. And this is essentially, um, remember that the, uh, the null here is that the these series is um, non-correlated and here in the bottom right I see that I, I've got a p-value of 0.4972 so based on pretty much any significance level um, which as a statistician I should have stated before I actually ran the test but let's suppose that we're testing that alpha 0.05 I fail to reject and I consider this series to be stationary and we know it was generated through a stationary process so no, no surprise there now, if I compute um, the test on the trended series, sure enough, I get a p-value of, you know, to the minus 16 power, a lot of zeros there. 
So I would definitely reject at alpha 0.05 and um, say that the series is, is non-stationary. So the next test that we're going to talk about is the augmented Dickey-Fuller test here. And so for our Dickey-Fuller, um, I'm going to use the library uh, T-series here um, for this particular function. And so the null hypothesis is that the unit root is present in the time series sample. And the alternative hypothesis is different, but it's usually whether it's stationary um, or, or trend stationary. So the augmented Dickey-Fuller is um, uh, used for a more complicated set of time series uh, models. So if I run this Dickey-Fuller on the stationary um, period, I get point, a p-value of 0 0.01. And again, so the nice thing here is it actually explicitly states that the alternative hypothesis is that it is um, stationary. So at 0 0.05, I would reject. Um, and then for the trended, I would um, fail to reject and conclude that the, the uh, uh, null is the appropriate uh, conclusion that we have non-stationarity. And then lastly, we have this KPSS statistic um, that we can run. And so if I run that, um, again, I get a, a null here and conclude that the, the uh, and it's consistent with the augmented Dickey Fuller, um, and then I can run the, the last series um, here um, on the trended trended one as well. Um, so I'm um, um, actually when I was uh, seeing that I was seeing this as 0 0.01. So um, in this first test of the stationary series, we would fail to reject, and that is the um, the null and the alternative um, here is that it's non-stationary. So when I run against the trended version, I get a p-value of 0 0.01, which is significant. So it's actually the reverse of what we're seeing with the Dickey-Fuller, right? So it's it's the the uh, flip side of that. Which statisticians would get together for coffee and and decide the the direction of all these tests. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for, for joining. Hopefully that was, was useful and we'll be picking it up uh, with a few more on uh, ARIMA, uh, a few additional topics to go in this, this R series.